This is a nondescript hermetically sealed container. And this is a modest amount of iron oxide rich outback topsoil. Why did I travel literally to the back of Burke to acquire this handful of red earth? So I could use it on this adorable little Stegosaurus diorama. I made this over three days during the COVID lockdown as a whimsical model with zero scientific accuracy intended. How so? Well, two reasons. Firstly, this 35th scale Tamiya sculpt is of the old school tail dragger depiction, which we know now is a completely inaccurate. Much more accurate is this drawing that my son made, which shows a far more dynamic physiology that is the modern way that the creature is understood to be posed. However, I still have a soft spot, a nostalgic spot in my heart for this school of paleo art. So just for fun, I decided to make it. The other reason is because there has never been any skeletal remains of a stegosaurus discovered in Australia. So this was just a completely fantasy depiction on my part. I just wanted to pursue it because I like this model and I just wanted to use the red earth. So what I did, the first thing I did, of course, was build the model, set it aside to dry, and cut out the plywood base. Then I smeared that with a very thin layer of plaster. While that was drying, I pressed the feet into the plaster so that I would know where the model was going to go for the composition. And I knew where I wasn't going to put any of these other elements. Then I painted a medium brown over the uh, plaster and then with glue, PVA glue, smeared over it, then I applied the red earth. Then I painted the Stegosaurus model entirely black. And when people were seeing it, they were going, why in the world are you doing that? That makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. But while that black was drying, then I added the other elements, the base, the plants, the rocks, some of which are molded using uh, aluminum foil, and others which are natural rocks, including this very cool volcanic rock right here. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah, we can see it. And added a combination of model train landscape features and natural materials like these um, thorns. Now, I always build my dioramas so that they can be looked at from any direction, although there's obviously the front. I also wanted it to be uh, finished from all the other angles too. So I found this really incredible piece of wood here that makes a really great petrified log. It scales up really nicely. And you can see rings. It's all weathered very nicely. Mm -hmm. And then this dry dead tree here was really a root system that I found lying on the ground somewhere. And it just really works. It was a dead tree. Once the black was dried, I then mixed a nice tan color and paint and dry brushed up from the bottom and then reddened that a bit and then painted this more uh, ochre color down to meet it. 
and then using first these nodes that were molded in and then I just did all the white dots and kind of went to town in this sort of kind of aboriginal inspired pattern which really seemed to fit in with the landscape given the um, white rocks that are around and you can imagine it would be very camouflaged against the ground and once I did that I went in and did the plates which I'm really happy with I really like the plates and then details like the uh, the eyes and the spikes and overall I'm really really happy with it And although I knew that there'd never been any Stegosaurus uh, skeleton or bones discovered in Australia, I just decided before I made this video to do some fact checking. And uh, so I asked AI, have Stegosauruses ever been in Australia? And the answer I got was that very recently, the largest fossil dinosaur footprint ever discovered in Australia gives evidence that the Stegosaurus actually lived here. And it even gave me a little uh, imaginative scenario. It said, so next time you were in the outback, Imagine this huge armored beast traipsing around, leaving its mark in the red earth. And I thought, hey, I already have. I already have imagined that. And when I did, and when I dug further, what I found was that the largest set of Stegosaurus footprints ever discovered were in Australia, and that they were stolen from Aboriginal land. And the local Aboriginal people considered those footprints to be sacred. And that they were also very useful for scientists tracking the movement of the geological plates. And so, as it turns out, the Stegosaurus depiction here, although still physiologically inaccurate, wasn't nearly as whimsical as I first thought. 